Erev Tov. Good evening, everyone. This week's Parsha uh, is the Parsha of uh, Bo, Parsha Bo, uh, the Parsha which actually, of course, uh, we see the final three Makot, which we're not going to focus on tonight. Of course, there's so much that we can uh, focus on in Parsha, both, both Parsha of uh, Eira and Bo. But uh, this evening, we're, we're going to focus on a couple of mitzvot. And of course, this is the first Parsha, which really has within it um, a significant emphasis upon mitzvah performance. Up until this, up until this Parsha, so we uh, basically, we engaged in, uh, in narrative, or our Kodesh Baruch Hu engaged us in narrative. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I just want to get rid of all. Kodesh Baruch Hu admitted, uh, uh, Kodesh Baruch Hu engaged us in narrative. But now, beginning with Parshat Bo, we of course have, Parshat Bo has both narrative in it, but of course, associated with it, we have many beautiful mitzvot, the mitzvah of, of, of Sipur Yitziat Mitzrayim. It's a mitzvah d'oraita. Yeah, it's a mitzvah to engage our children in learning. It's a mitzvah of, uh, of tefillin. Uh, of mezuzah, of various different mitzvot, which we have, um, uh, Pidyan Aben, all of these are either directly uh, tied to this parsha, or um, um, at least allied to the parsha itself. So we are going to um, discuss tonight, I'm going to ask you to turn to Perak, Perak, uh, um, Perak Yud Gimel, Perak Yud Gimel, chapter 13, uh, Pasuk Chet. The Torah, of course, gives us, which I didn't mention, but of course, just prior to this, the Torah gives us the mitzvah of matzah. Of, it's a mitzvah de raisa, mitzvah to say, to eat matzah on the, on the night of Pesach. And as you know, we, of course, our mitzvah can be, can be sub- divided in different ways, mitzvot with, that have to do with Eretz Israel, mitzvot that, that are for every uh, uh, for everyone everywhere, mitzvot that have to do with the Beit HaMikdash, mitzvot for Kani, mitzvot for women, mitzvot uh, for various different groups, and no one person uh, will be able to fulfill all of the mitzvot all of the time, because again, some of them are for specific groups. Now, uh, we're going to take a look today at, at the mitzvah of Avhigadta Levincha Bayoma Hulemu. The Torah tells us that, uh, that, of course, we have the mitzvah of Mach and the mitzvah of Maror. And we have the mitzvah, uh, we have the mitzvah that have to do with Pesach and relating to Pesach. But then uh, the Torah also tells us the Higadta Levincha Bayoma Hu. On that day when your child asks you or uh, about why do we do all of this? So you say to that person, to that child, Ba'avur Zeh Asa Hashem Li Betzeti Mimitzrayim. Because of this, Ba'avur Zeh, because of this, and Rashi says, what is Ba'avur Zeh? This, of course, is a pronoun. As I've said many times, when my students uh, can recite it in their sleep at, at school, um, all pronouns are ambiguous. So the question is, what is this there? Um, and we're going to, tonight we're going to discuss partially that issue. Bav was there because of this. Asa Hashem Li, Kodesh Baruch Hu did this for me, meaning to say, you'd see at Mitzrayim, but say to me Mitzrayim, as I left Mitzrayim. Now Rashi seems to indicate, Bav was there means, and he says, that's the purpose of true freedom. Freedom does not mean that I can drive my Porsche 120 miles an hour. Freedom is, uh, from a Torah perspective, freedom is to be able to be an Eved Hashem, to be able to fulfill my purpose in the world. As a matter of fact, you know, everyone, when you reach a certain age, so... Uh, little kids come up to you or their parents come up to you and they'll say, would you give me a bracha? Would you give my son a bracha? Well, 
Um, I do believe that that we have the power to bestow brachot, but the only brachot that I can bestow, uh, which which is even remotely attached, is to say to a child, "May Hakadosh Baruch Hu help you to live to your full potential for good." That's the greatest bracha, and with that, it comes with that comes health and other things too, and of course, those things are important. But ultimately, the greatest bracha we can have is to be able to fulfill the reason for which we were created. And, um, and another thing I mention very often, especially to my seniors, whom I love dearly, I, I, I have a, a phrase that simply says, you weren't created to go to hospital. You weren't, or Yale, or U of I, or Oakton, or any, that's not why we were created. Those places have within them the capacity to help us to fulfill our potential. And the person is blessed Hashem with a with a mind uh, for for mathematics, science, for literature, for music, for any number of things. Those institutions can help you to fulfill you fulfill your potential. That's not why we were created. I was created if 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 I have have great musical talent. I was created precisely to use it to bring. Uh, to bring inspiration to the world, whether it's math or, or, or science, uh, you know, you, of course, all of the new medications and, that that are and procedures that that come up, those those make people's lives uh, more not more meaningful. Our life is meaningful no matter how much we can accomplish, but it makes uh, that makes people more capable of fulfilling their uh, potential. So that's. The idea, and uh, now Rav Hirsch mentions on Pasuk Chet, the Gadta Levincha. Um, Rav Hirsch says, well, first I'll tell you, before I tell you Rav Hirsch, Rav Yosheh Ber Salvechik says that the word the Gadta, Hagada, uh, the Hagada, which we speak about, is, is, is to become a witness, okay? Heathen Shehigi, true Eno Choser Umagi. The idea is witnesses, uh, they they uh, attest to the fact that an event either did or did not occur, or the manner in which an event occurred. So the Torah tells every Jew, you, are, you must bear witness uh, on Bayomahu, on that day that your child asks, or on Pesach itself, the first the Seder. So you you have to you have to uh, bear witness. That's what Rabbi Yosha Bear says, and of course it is true because the, the Haggadah itself says to us, "Bechol dor vador chayav adam yirot et atzmo ilu hu yatsami mitzrayim." Every generation, a person is obligated, okay, to see himself or herself, ki ilu yatsami mitzrayim, as if she or he. Uh, personally left Mitzrayim. And the reality is that that's true. And here's what Rav Cook says about that. First of all, you, you have to ask your question. If someone would say, listen, every Jew is required to see himself or herself as if they were personally liberated from Auschwitz, which that liberation date is, uh, is upon us, uh, 1945. So uh, uh, I think January 27th, I believe, 1945 was the date of the liberation. I cannot fulfill that. I'm sorry. It's not that I, I, I don't want to. No one who was in Auschwitz could understand the depths of despair or the exhilaration of being uh, liberated. No one can, unless you were there or, or in a similar camp. Right? It doesn't have to be Auschwitz. And it may it never be again. But nobody can, can personally understand. Can see. So then what's the purpose of uh, of of uh, of every person has to see herself or himself as if they personally were liberated from its rhyme, but I wasn't there. And not only I wasn't there, the event happened more than 3,000 years ago. So what is the meaning? Uh, we, with this, we could we can answer this with a, a statement of Rav Cook. Rav Cook said, don't look at Yitziat Mitzrayim, about which we are learning now. 
don't look at it, don't look at it as an event. Look at it as a process. That you'd see at Mitzrayim is a process that, that had, of course, a starting point. That was the event. That was the first Seder, what we call Seder Mitzrayim, right? But nevertheless, it, it unfolds in many, many, many different ways with so many different people and, uh, and, and in so many places. That's what it is. So if I see that, wait, I in Tafshin Pei Gimel uh, have, have seen a certain form of liberation or the Torah that I've learned have, has enlightened me to understanding, by the way, how awful it is to, um, to uh, enslave another human being, how awful it is, then we have yet, an, we have yet another uh, uh, variation of Yitziat Mitzrayim. And so it will be with our, if, if we bear that testimony with our own children, so it will go on, it will go on with them and them and they with their children. So that's what it means, Rav Cook says. He got to. Now, however, I want to add something that, that Rabbi um, Rav Hirsch says. Um, very, very stunning. He says, He got to comes from the word neged. Neged. Uh, because it is indeed the verb form of neged. You have to confront your child. Have to. It's not enough to send them a letter or an email, which we're so used to doing. But they have to be before you. You have to be in front of them. You have to have that personal connection. You can't get it. Uh, it's very nice, of course, to read books on Yitzhak Mitzrayim, books on Gedole Yisrael. But Eino Dome Shmiya Kiriya, right? Hearing is, is not nearly as powerful, as meaningful seeing. So our children have to see us uh, acting properly. They have to see us uh, preparing for the Seder not just to read about it and intellectually understand it. That's what of Hirsch says. He got Talavimcha. Be there with him when you're going to explain. Now, here we're coming now to uh, Ramban. The Ramban uh, reads this Pasek a little differently. He says, He got Talavimcha by Yomahu. You, you shall talk to your child on that day, lay more saying, Ba'avur Zeh. Now, Ba'avur Zeh, Rashi says Ba'avur Zeh means, you want to know why? Take a look. Take a look at the matzah, take a look at the morar, take a look at the yayin. And this is why we were, we were redeemed, so that we can fulfill Hashem's mitzvot. Okay? But here's what the, Rashi, what the Ramban does. He has one letter. Ba'avur Zeh. It isn't when what we are to tell our children that it is because of this that God has done for me. Therefore, this Seder is testimony. It is an expression of gratitude. So the question is, remember, all pronouns, all, all pronouns are ambiguous. So is the Zed the matzah or is it or uh, is it for the purpose of for the purpose of expressing gratitude. That's why we do this. So the question is whether mitzvot are ends in themselves or means to an end or both. Well, in reality, we can say that mitzvot are certainly, uh, in, in, in a real sense, means to an end. So uh, if I, in other words, uh, if, if my end is to completely and as much as possible um, uh, live a, a way of life uh, that, that God wants me to. So building a sukkah is part of that. Uh, having a mezuzah on my door is part of it. All of those things, uh, uh, these are, according to the Ramban, it appears that it's not just the matzah and morah. It's God liberated me from its rayim, And so therefore, all of the mitzvot that I have are, are uh, means by which I express gratitude. Um, on the other hand, According to Rashi, it appears mitzvot are ends in themselves. You know why I was taken out of Mitzrayim, and you, you, you and I are the uh, are the beneficiaries of that, so that I can fulfill my 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 tachlit. It doesn't have to do necessarily with gratitude. Gratitude is very important, but it's not necessarily gratitude. It is when I when I take the matzah in hand, 
when I take, when I, when I put on tefillin, when I, when I uh, kiss a mezuzah, all right, that is, I'm fulfilling my reason for being, my raison d'etre, and that would be that it's an end in itself. It is an end in itself. Now, now, now we can see, again, the machlok between Rashi and the Ram, and Ramban, it could be they really don't differ at all. They probably both, uh, when you think about it, uh, they both would believe that mitzvot are ends in themselves. Uh, but on the other hand, the question is, what's the intent of this, of this pusik, of this phrase, ba'avur zeh shem asali, or is it ba'avur zeh asali? Leave out the word zeh, all right? That's, again, uh, an interesting uh, um, interpretation, di differentiation of interpretation. But today, um, we're going to look at the next pusik. The next pusik is the powerful mitzvah of of uh, tefillin, pasuk tet, the next mitzvah, the next mitzvah goes as follows: "Vahaya lacha laot al yad al yadcha." This shall be a sign upon your hand, ulzikaron bein enecha, and it shall be a, 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 a remembrance between your eyes. That's the tefillin. Okay, leman tiyet torat Hashem b'fichah. For the purpose of making the, the word of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and the Torah of Hashem constantly in your mind. That Hashem took us out. And so when we fulfilled any mitzvah, but the mitzvah of, of tefillin and, and the mitzvah of tefillin, the Torah here seems to tie that mitzvah very closely to Yitzhiat Mitzrayim. Now the Ramban Makes what we're going to sort of quote one of his most famous statements um, about the purpose of mitzvot in general. He writes as follows: Ba'avur ki hakadosh baruch hu lo yaase ot humofek b'chol dor le'ene kol rasha o kofe. God is not a genie which who whips up. Um, uh, an ace just because some some disp some non-believer decides, oh, show me now. What have you done for me lately? But God doesn't do Nisim that way. At least uh, what he calls Nisim Gluyim. Um, uh, that would be obvious mitzvot. And the definition of obvious mitzvot means not just for one person, for one small group, but, but by and large for the world. God doesn't do that. So what does he do? We are therefore, it is not incumbent upon God to provide a nace on demand. Rather, um, it is incumbent upon us to use the mitzvot that we have to serve the purpose that a nace okay. So he says, that what we have seen, you know, that, that God will, um, does not, he commands us to do mitzvah. That until the final generation, uh, instead of constant miracles, mitzvah themselves become that vehicle by which we recognize our Kodesh Baruch Hu's interaction with the world. Okay. Then, um, and, and so therefore he gives examples, because we, we wear tefillin and we put on a mezuzah. Every time we walk out the a, a mezuzah, the door, the door, we are reminded of a Kodesh Baruch Hu's chesed. I have a house. Attached to that door is a house. Okay. And, and so therefore, uh, and I real and that is what he calls the Ramban, Nesli Star. That is, those, those I, will, I, I don't want to use the term the little thing, but we human beings make those, unfortunately, uh, statements about little things, but everything that Hashem does for us is, uh, is a big thing. So um, that's what he says. Therefore, we have an abundance of mitzvot and that we are to perform. And then, mitzvah, regarding the mitzvah of Tfilin, Lamantis kor et yom tzeit chamer tzitzrayim kol yemei chayah. 
when we put on tefillin, and then put on tefillin. So that's their reminder on a daily basis. And he says, Vishana says suka bakal shana. Now certain mitzvot are done every day. Certain mitzvot are done once a year. Ten kol kayotzi bahen mitzvot rabot litziyat mitzrayim. These are all, all of these mitzvot are associated with litziyat mitzrayim in the Torah itself. Ba'akol liot lanu b'chol adorot edut umoftim shalom yishtachem. Shalom nishkachot. So that these are all um, the means by which we remember. And that is in place of separate individual um, uh, magnificent nations. So the Ramban says certain mitzvot are called edut or edot. They are verification of God in the world. And some are called moftim, as we're going to see in, in a moment. Okay, uh, So that's the Ramban. And we're not quite done. One more thing. And he says, this is such a powerful thing. When you acknowledge the, the nisim, which themselves appear to us to be magnificent, we come to appreciate the, what, we, what we would call those nisim, which are on a daily basis, that we sometimes um, don't acknowledge as much as we should. Shehem is soda Torah, Kula, Shehem la Adam Chelek the Torah, Moshe Rabbeinu, Ad Shana, Amin, Bechol, Devarenu, Umikrenu. We uh, have our, our um, association with, with the Torah of Moshe only comes with our belief that everything comes from God. Bechol, Devarenu, Bechol, Mikrenu, Shekulam, Nisi. And we're going to talk about this um, because I'd like to share with you an observation that. I believe that there are two types of, uh, of interactions of Hashem with the world. One is what we call nes. Now, nes in, in Hebrew and in Tanakh is, um, the, it's a mast on a boat. So, uh, we have them now as, as they did back then. The mast usually was either to fit, to be fitted with sails, or sometimes it, it held aloft a flag so that people knew who they should and should not shoot at. So uh, we see them even on tanks. As well, when you see on the Israeli tanks, they, they, they have these, uh, um, at the end of these rods that, that seem to move with them, and there are flags. And those flags are important to the people who are involved. And uh, God forbid in a battle, we shouldn't know, need it or know it, but it's unfortunately, uh, it, uh, it can be a way of life. So that's a nace. So everybody can see it. The purpose of the nace is so that everybody should see it. And that would include such things as Yitziat Mitzrayim, uh, such things as um, uh, we, we would say uh, the Six Day War, to me, the nace. Everybody read, even the, the news, every newspaper that we went when, when, uh, when we were there. Uh, uh, I see Kenny's here, so Kenny, you, you, I'm sure you remember the Six Day War and uh, mm -hmm. and what the world believed in. You know, the, they wrote the, the, the secular newspapers wrote about it uh, about the God of Israel, and, and so that that's a nace that everybody sees, splitting of the Red Sea, etc. But then there's a second form of interaction that Hashem has with people, and that is what the Ramban calls the Nisnister, the Nistarim, those things which people can easily overlook because they don't see them or don't acknowledge them. And, and the Ramban, as he says here, the big, the big Nisim will bring us to understand the smaller Nistarim. Now, what I, I'd like to share the, the, the view with you that there, that there are two types of Nisim and that they are found actually um, in in Shmon Esrei, we say it. We don't. We can remind ourselves three times a day. Uh, in Modim, the prayer Modim. Modim. A lot of people uh, interpret as Modim as we give thanks, but I think that even though thanks is a part of it, it really means to acknowledge. We acknowledge, right? First, the truth is uh, you have to acknowledge that God is the source of everything, and so then 
we say we we acknowledge you Shata, that you are uh, that you are uh, the God of our fathers etc uh, you are the rock and then we say no uh, we shall now here it is probably we give thanks to you and we acknowledge and we uh, express your your praise now al khayenu amsurim biadecha our lives that are that are given into your control biadecha here means god doesn't have a hand means our lives are in god's control and our neshama which is uh, again you you uh, you oversee men and on the great miracles, they're all here. The, the great Nisim that happen are not always apparent to everybody, but somewhere, some someplace, someone is seeing Hashem's nace. Then, a pelem, the word pele means, uh, uh, means to, uh, to uncover, okay? Is sun anything, or actually pellets to cover, actually. When Avram Avinu talks to Sari Menu, and when Hashem talks to Sari Menu, and, and she seems to laugh when she's so old and doesn't seem to be able to have a child, what, is, what does the Malach say? my Hashem Is anything covered up from God? Can anything be so distant or covered up from God that he, that he can't do it? That's what a pella is. All right, a pella is something which is covered up. I think that's a perfect description that Chazal used for the Nistaro. They're covered up. A baby is born, and we take it for granted. Uh, we get, we get uh, many diseases, uh, then it's on ducks, no problem, here's an antibiotic. And we don't realize it's not the, it's not the science. The science, of course, is important. We have to be grateful to scientists, to pharmacists, to any, Many people who uh, to assist us, they're the shluchim of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. But but because it's such a daily occurrence, then um, that's what we call a pillar. God's hand is covered up, so to speak, but it's always there. So that uh, is. I want to make sure that we talk about that this evening, which we did. Now. Um, when we want to go back to the issue of uh, of tefillin, uh, in particular, because that's the mitzvah that was given here, um, th this mitzvah, interesting, Rav Cook makes a statement. He says, uh, he says, you know, don't look at don't look at the liberation from Mitzrayim as being free, physically free, to be able to do whatever we want. We mentioned that earlier. Uh, and that's true. Of course, it includes that, by the way. Uh, but uh, Rav Cook says, the truth is the great enslaver of the world in which we live is secularism. It addresses human beings um, uh, at, in, a, in a way that we are devoid of Kedusha, that we are devoid of sanctity. And so when HaKadosh Baruch Hu freed us, uh, you know, when, when, when every day all you're doing is looking for, for a little piece of scrap of bread or to avoid uh, a beating, so then that doesn't allow you to be able to pursue Kedusha. And so Rav Cook says the real message of, of, uh, of Mitzrayim, the freedom of Mitzrayim, was that our physical travail that, that we encountered uh, was removed from us. And that liberated us. It freed us to pursue Kedusha. Now, I've mentioned in the past, the word Kedusha, uh, in the Jewish sense, means purposefulness. To be able, as long as I'm, I'm scrounging for, for a piece of bread, then I can still, I certainly can find purpose in my life. But if, if I'm overwhelmed with that, or to avoid being beaten, a part of my ability to achieve my fullest uh, potential is gone. 
So when HaKadosh Baruch Hu removed us from Mitzrayim and removed the taskmaster master from uh, above us, so that is what now liberated and has freed us. As Rashi says, Now I'm free to, uh, to understand the reason why I was created and to be able to pursue that purpose. Now, the uh, say for Achinuch, oh, we're done. We can make people stop here this evening. Um, so, the uh, Sikum, uh, to, to uh, summarize, the idea here that we have a Kodesh Baruch who tells us that we really have the capacity to be witnesses. Rav Cook says the reason we can be true witnesses is even though is that we must look at, a, at, at the exodus from Egypt not as an event, but as a, an unfolding process of which we are a part now, 3,000 years later. We're a part of that unfolding process. The people who lived in Mitzrayim were the beginning of that unfolding process. But it will continue in Adimot HaMashiach until that, that comes about. And then, and for us, the Ramban, very important thing that the Ramban teaches us, and that is that, uh, that mitzvot uh, are the reminders for us uh, that even though we don't have a nace every single day that's, that's in the category of the Yitzhiat Mitzrayim, or, or Kriyat Yam Suf. But the, the mitzvah that we perform are themselves witnesses. That they are a form of testimony that there is a God in the world. And as I spoke last week, um, the, the purpose of the makot were instructional. First nine were instructional to teach that there is the mitziyut Hashem. God is in the world. Two, that God looks and is concerned for the welfare of people. And three, that God is the creator of the world, and therefore he is the manipulator of what we call nature. So there's much more that we can say uh, tonight, but hopefully that's enough that we can digest, and hopefully we'll see you next week. I want to wish everybody Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you. so many. Have a good day. Amazing. Bye. So, Bye. Uh, so many. <laughs> Thank you. Good Shabbos. Thank you. Good Shabbos. Thank you very much. Okay, everybody. Have a great show. Maflila Asot. You are Maflila Asot. Thank you. Maflila. <laughs> okay.